It's news time. Information is power. The current. The news headline. Two different re Nigerians who may be sentenced to life imprisonment if found guilty in the court. The news in full. Two different Nigerians have found their way to court to answer for the crimes they have been accused of committing. These two Nigerians, if found guilty of their respective crimes, may end up being sentenced to life imprisonment. Unless, uh, of course, there are some exceptions introduced to the delivery of their judgments by their respective judges. One, Enabdekanu, Enabdekanu, who is actually the leader of the uh, indigenous people of Biafra, we know that he has actually been at the court of law for quite a while now, facing uh, a whole lot of charges, uh, that is treasonable felony amidst others. And uh, also, number two, is Olani uh, Waju Minka, that is Babai Jesha. We know that Babai Jesha, who is a popular actor, Olani uh, Waju Minka, aka Babai Jesha, you know, he appeared in court as well for the continuation of his trial after facing a six count charge of sexual assault by penetration, indecent treatment of a child, and sexual assault, which contravenes section 259, 135, and 261 of the criminal law of Lagos State 2011, as well as 135, 263, and 262 criminal law of Lagos State 2015. The actor was arrested in April 2021 for allegedly sexually assaulting a 14-year-old foster child of popular comedian e, Damilola Adekoya, a.k.a. Princess. What the law says about sexual assault, although not mandatory in all laws in Nigeria, under the various Nigerian laws with provision, on rape, the penalty for rape is life imprisonment. However, the court of law can, in its discretion, give a shorter sentence to the accused person. This means that if the actor is found guilty of all the charges and the court fails to give a shorter sentence without no postponement of the trial, Babai Jesha may actually be sentenced to life imprisonment. However, Mazen Abdekanu, who is the indigenous people of Biafra, that is IPOB leader, uh, he was rearrested in June 2021, uh, of which he fled to, out of the country in April 2017, after he was granted bail during his first arrest, and therefore he has been arraigned in court on the seven count charges on October 21st, 2021, and the case has been postponed to November 10, 2021. Bear in mind that over 30 million Igbo youth wouldn't accept or believe in any judgment against Inandekanu. This reality on ground is the reason that the government needs to find uh, first before find out first before engaging in the kangaroo judgment. Furthermore, one is a youth council pointed out that hence Nigeria government has not produced or put to trial those who killed over 100 Benwindi jeans during New Year, January 2018. The ex-men that killed over 30 Igbos in Ukwabi Ningbo Enugu in 2016. The headsmen that killed over 10 Igbos at Upoku Umbuji Eha Amufu Enugu in August 2021. The headsmen that killed over 30 Ebonian in May 2021. The headsmen that killed over 20 Ebonians in June 2021, sacking over seven villages. We note, with utmost dismay, that our brother and sister of Middle Belt extraction are victims of Fulani headsmen terrorism, the just killings, Southern Kaduna. Taraba Nasarawa have recorded over 1,000 victims, yet none has been tried in the courts or charged for terrorism by the federal government of Nigeria. The lopsided style of President Muhammad Buhari over the real terrorists has set Nandekano free. This is why peace or justice can't come through legal means or regard in Nandekano's case. The road to justice is not partial. If the federal government of Nigeria, led by President Muhammad Buhari, can't produce the terrorist Fulani headsmen that committed the above litany of terrorist attacks against Indigo. Then they have no moral justification to trial uh, of Inabdekanu. This is why Indigo, even those that does, don't like Inabdekanu approach over Biafra restoration, wouldn't accept any legal judgment against Inabdekanu bordering on terrorism and treason. It is expedient that the federal government should drop charges of victimization and embrace dialogue and negotiation over the quest for self-determination projects by the new generation 
of Igbo extraction. And this is the Unanis Indigo saying that, uh, you know, through their spokesman saying that the Nigerian government, you know, needs to bear in mind that the Biafra project is not just an uh, Igbo project, but it is a scene of reflection of all the leading Biafra restoration leaders from the Igbo extraction, saying that it is crystal clear that there are thousands of Igbo youths that are angry and determined about the Biafra restoration. Then even in Namdekanu himself, we had a, a particular senator has said at a particular point in time that there are over you know, 30 separatist, that are, separatist group that are agitating for uh, the Biafra nation, saying that the federal government perfect justice and jail uh, him and the likes of uh, new Namdekanu that will emerge. It turned out, you know, this is the... Uh, the, the, the spokesperson, uh, spokesperson and the chairman of uh, Wale Zindigo that is actually uh, you know, expressing their view, saying that in summary, that the Ibuayaka, that is Ibuayaka his name, that maintained that Buhari's lopsided uh, style over Fulani Edgemen, who are the real terrorists, uh, you know, and uh, needs to set Kano free because uh, those terrorists are able to be negotiated with. But in the Kano, who is actually, uh, you know, not, uh, you know, killing, uh, you know, uh, killing people uh, and making it obvious again, you know, just like the terrorist uh, is being uh, pursued at all costs and, uh, you know, uh, being, being, being kept with the DSS facility, being restricted. Yet the terrorists are there, uh, who are doing worse, and yet being negoci uh, nego negotiated with, and uh, that is what is needed for you know, the kind of a negotiation to freedom that would now you know chill the people of the Igbo extraction down against their uh, against their uh, their agitation, and that is why the apex youth wing of one is in the Worldwide Council (OIC) are urging the federal government of Nigeria to desist from pressing charges uh, against Mazin Namdekanu. Instead, they need to embrace dialogue and negotiation, and that the the conspiracy by the president's Muhammadu Buhari's led administration uh, is just geared towards influencing in Abdekanu's case, which is even dead on arrival, saying that even if in Abdekanu's case was actually you know uh, found guilty, you know the charges for terrorism, and in fact a fresh charges of about seven uh, count charges, say that any one of it that is um, that is that, that Abdekanu is found guilty of, if at all. You understand, he is actually guilty that the Igbo extraction will never agree to it and it will continue to cause uh, a whole lot of uh, topsy turvy mayhem in the southeastern region. Therefore, it is best for the federal government to come to a round table with uh, you know, these people to ensure that uh, you know, there, is, there is peace in between them. They come call for dialogue and therefore the people uh, might actually stop uh, the agitation or the mayhem going on uh, in the states rather than just, uh, I, 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 they're just arresting a lot of them and causing utmost dis uh, dismay, uh, you know, making a lot of people fall victim of the uh, you know, injustice and um, the disruption of peace in the southeastern region. Thanks for listening.